In 1944, Japanese intelligence officer Hiro Onoda was sent on mission to a remote Philippine island to carry out guerrilla warfare during the Second World War. Now, unfortunately, Onoda was never officially informed that the war came to an end in 1945. And so as crazy as this sounds, he actually remained on that remote island for 29 years, just surviving off bananas and coconuts and carrying out his war orders in denial until eventually his former commander was flown in to where he was found to issue a direct order that all combat activity be ceased. Now, I came across this story one morning as I was meditating on Psalm 118, and specifically it was verses 15 and 17 that kind of connected the dots for me. Verse 15 says, shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. And verse 17 says, I will not die, but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. And I just thought, you know, what happened? when an army wins a war. Shouts of joy and victory rise up among the people, right? There's rejoicing throughout the nation because victory is won. So what, how is this connected, right, to the guy who spent almost 30 years fighting a war that had long since ended? Well, see, as I read his story and I thought about it and I thought about Psalm 118, it struck me that as Christians, we are living in a time of spiritual victory today, and yet so many of us, for some reason, act like we're living in a time of war. War times are times of, of suffering and fear. It's when you hide in your basement, right, to protect yourself. This is not the time that we are living in as Christians today. See, we don't have to wonder about our future or our fate. We don't have to live under the oppression of insecurity, of anxiety, of fear, depression, addictions. We don't have to live in bondage to sin because today... We are living in the victory and the great war for our salvation had, has ended and spoiler alert, Jesus won, right? In the cosmic battle for our souls, Jesus came out on top. And though we were once living in a kingdom of darkness, we have been delivered into a kingdom of light and there is no need to walk around in fear of our oppressors in this kingdom because we have a good king who cannot be dethroned. But... This is not what the enemy would have us believe. See, Satan wants me to believe that I am still living in war times. And if he can convince us that we are still at war, that we need to be striving to be good enough, that we need to be fighting our own battles, fighting for our own freedom, then we will never let our guard down to walk in the freedom that Christ has already won for us. Listen, we shouldn't be living like Hiro Onoda who hid in the mountains for almost three decades, not accepting the fact that there was already peace. No, we have a responsibility to choose to come down from our mountain hideouts and to walk in the joy and the freedom of the Lord. And we need to wake up. Guys, we need to wake up to the reality that the battle is ending, and that the kingdom of God is advancing and that no weapon formed against us can prevail. And we need to surrender our striving and realize that we can have joy today because we have victory today. Because joy is a responsibility, yes, but it's also a response, not to our circumstances, but to our victory in Jesus. Let me say that one more time. Joy is a response, not to our circumstances, but to our victory in Jesus. And here's the thing. I think if we live like this, like if we start to get this, we're not going to be stuck hiding in the jungle 
because of our stubborn refusal to see the truth, we won't be surviving off bananas and coconuts. No, we will taste and see that the Lord is good, and we will march forward in faith, declaring the truths of Psalm 118, I will not die but live, and we'll proclaim what the Lord has done with shouts of joy and victory, because joy is a response not to our circumstances, but to our victory in Jesus. Thank you.